Welcome to Arlington Public News. I'm Brenda Mahoney. And I'm James Milan. Thanks for joining us. In this edition of APN, Stephen Byrne steps down from the Board of Selectmen. And Arlington Center gets new signaling again. Plus, Shopping Local gets a boost from the town how it's about more than just attracting dollars. You're going to get something really special that you can't just get anywhere else. That and more up next. Stay with us. Town Night is going dark next September, and it's time to gear up for Town Meeting 2018. Deepak Bidwai has more in this week's snapshot. Give us the details, Deepak. Thanks, James. What is now Town Night began as a family-friendly fireworks display. The event has grown every year and now includes a dog show, bouncy houses, and pony rides. And now it may be a victim of its own success. At the October 30th Selectman's meeting, Town Day Committee liaison Kevin Greeley reported to the board that the committee had been discussing the future of the town tonight. Greeley said the increasing scope of the event has become a drain on both the finances and the energy of the all-volunteer Town Day Committee. We may recommend that we do away with town night. Uh, it has gone from a fireworks display to almost a carnival uh, situation. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, but there's so much work that has to go into the town day itself that we're stressing police, fire, public works, not to mention our own staff. For example, this year we, we the Board of Selectmen, through the budgeting of town day, spent all of the money we raised for town day on town night. Town day and town night are funded entirely through donations and booth registration fees. Town Night itself cost almost $21,000 this year. Costs include fireworks, vendors, and town safety services. The Board of Selectmen agreed to accept the Town Committee's decision on whether to keep or suspend Town Night activities. Mr. Greeley came back to the Board at the last Selectmen's meeting and told the Board the Committee had decided to suspend Town Night activities for 2018. Both the board and the committee left open the possibility of a third party stepping in to find funding and take over organization of the event. Mark your calendars. The board of selectmen has approved town meeting dates for 2018. Annual town meeting will begin on Monday, April 23rd. Warrant articles can be submitted to the board of selectmen's office from Tuesday, December 5th through Friday, January 26th. In addition, a special town meeting has been called for Monday, February 12th. There are currently two articles set to be considered funding to continue work on, on the six classroom addition to the Hardy School and the recodification of the zoning bylaws. Town meeting must approve the access to construction dollars set aside for the project. The vote on zoning recodification could be delayed until April town meeting. At the selectmen's meeting, residents spoke in favor of more time to review the new document the recodification group will have to make a decision on whether or not to bring it before February town meeting within the next week. Resident and group can submit additional warrant articles on Wednesday, December 6th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. ACMI will bring you both the February and April town meetings live. I am Deepak Bidwai and that's it for edition of Snapshot. Back to you, James. The Arlington Safe Center Travel Project brought major signaling and bicycle traffic pattern changes to the intersections around Mass Ave, Pleasant and Mystic Street, and Swan Place earlier this year. The new configuration met with decidedly mixed reviews and a lot of confusion from drivers, cyclists, and pedestrians. The town has been hearing those concerns and is making changes at the busy intersection in an attempt to get things moving more smoothly. APN reporter Sean Stackhouse brings us the story. A pedestrian hybrid beacon is a new type of traffic signal for crosswalks that is safer for pedestrians while providing less delay for drivers. But understanding the new light system and traffic patterns hasn't been as easy as expected. 
From the beginning, Arlington residents have expressed concerns about the confusion caused by the new Hawk Light at the intersection of Mass Ave and Swan Place. The Hawk Light, I think, is a little bit difficult for bicycles because at the tail end of the cycle, when the cross light says you have three or four seconds, that's easily enough for a bicycle to get across the street, but the Hawk Light is already signaling that cars can go through. So I think, it's, I think it's potentially dangerous. Additional concerns were raised by cyclists, pedestrians, and drivers alike about the changes made through the Arlington Center Safe Travel Project. Director of Public Works Mike Rademacher addressed the issues at the November 20th Board of Selectmen meeting. There has been obviously some confusion there, motorists, cyclists, pedestrians, both, how that operates, and unfortunately it wasn't the, the right fit for that location. Rademacher so, outlined the uh, proposed changes. So in, in a nutshell, we're going to make it a, a, regular, a regular traffic signal uh, with lights like everyone understands and um, walk buttons like everyone understands. That'll still be coordinated with the intersection in the middle of town so that there'll be some efficiencies there for tra tra traffic traveling between the two intersections. Work is already underway to implement the changes approved by the Board of Selectmen. The Hawk Light itself is undergoing electrical fixes to make it work as a traditional traffic light. New signaling fixtures for pedestrians and cyclists are going up at the intersection of Mass Ave with Pleasant and Mystic Streets. Work is set to be completed during the first week of December. We'll check in with drivers, cyclists, and pedestrians and report back during our next newscast. For Arlington Public News, I'm Sean Stackhouse. APN spoke with members of the Arlington Bicycle Advisory Committee and the Transportation Advisory Committee about the changes. Both groups feel the changes are a step in the right direction. We'll hear more from both groups and the DPW in our follow-up story on the changes. Unexpected changes coming to the Board of Selectmen. At the November 20th meeting, Stephen Byrne announced he will be stepping down from the board in December. Byrne was in his mid-twenties when he first ran for a seat in the board in 2012. I feel it's time for me to step forward and serve Arlington, a town and community that has given so much to me and my family. As a member of the Board of Selectmen, I will devote myself to working with everyone in the community, bringing fresh ideas to the board, and planning for the future. The lifelong resident of Arlington became the youngest person to ever be elected to the seat. In 2015, he was elected to his second term and would be up for re-election in the spring of 2018. He cited increasing demands on his time during his announcement. There's only so much time in the day um, and, you know, due to some, uh, some changes at work and, you know, of course, getting married, I think it's, uh, it, it's time for me to, you know, spend some more time, um, you know, on, on those endeavors. I, We'll have a, um, a long list uh, of people to thank and, you know, uh, I will certainly talk about how much I enjoy my time here on the meeting on the 4th, but I thought it was um, important to let people know now. Um, know that I, I loved being on this board. I, it's an honor of a life um, to, to serve a community in this capacity. I've enjoyed working with all of my colleagues on the board. Of course, town staff, um, Adam Doug and of course the Selectman's office, Marie. So I, uh, I'll still be around for a couple more weeks and I'm sure we'll have you know, plenty of more time to have this discussion then. Thank you. The town manager act sets out a clear route to filling a vacant seat. The remaining Selectman and the town moderator, John Leone, have 30 days from when the vacancy begins to appoint an interim select person to serve until the next town election. That election is scheduled for April 7th, 2018. Chairman Joe Kiro will present a plan for the selection process at the December 4th meeting. The group will then have two weeks to consider and vote before the December 18th meeting when the board will appoint the interim select person in order to meet the 30-day deadline. Byrne's final board of selectmen meeting will be Monday, December 4th. Well, there's no denying it now. We can't get away from it. Shopping season is underway. But what is Arlington doing to keep local shoppers and the dollars right in town? And when you do your shopping in town, check out all the other activities as well. Three, two, one. Woo! We'll have all the events you won't want to miss. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
Welcome to the Retired Men's Club of Arlington. My name is Phil St. Marie. Meet the friends you haven't met yet. We have 500 members. We have lots and lots of uh, organizations to meet the friends with your own common interests. And uh, come on down. We're looking forward to see you. Uh, several years ago, I was wondering what I was going to be doing when I retired. My wife's father was in this men's club. The guy across the street was in the men's club. Down the street was in the men's club. So I said, hey, I'll give it a shot. And the rest has been magic. This is about friendships. The, we have golf, we have the speaker meetings. The, this is how you meet the friends. You get involved with these activities. And it, it's just a, a rewarding, fun experience. If you'd like to uh, know more about the men's club, fine. If your wife wants you the hell out of the house, that's fine too. So <laughs> come on down, there's lots of friends that uh, you've yet to meet. Well, the holiday shopping season is well underway, but as you grab those Black Friday and Cyber Week deals, you're being reminded to shop local. Businesses all along Massachusetts Avenue are offering discounts, and this year, their efforts are getting a boost from the town. Here is a look at just why shopping at local retailers may not only be good for the economy, but good for the fabric of our community. Hanging the snowflakes with care, the businesses up and down Massachusetts Avenue in Arlington aren't just luring customers, they're making spirits bright. Business is kind of like uh, the wallpaper or the paintings in your house. It creates a kind of a context and environment for the people. We need these businesses. People care about them so much. It's really a part of our town. To keep the town vibrant, Arlington's Economic Development Coordinator, Allie Carter, has been meeting with local businesses such as Kyle Russell's new Portal Crystal Gallery and Helena's women's clothing store in the center regularly. There had been shop local campaigns in the past, but this is the first one coordinated by the town. Allie has certainly been someone who listened to me. I feel like the town has really opened up its line of communication with retailers. There are over 600 businesses in Arlington, many of them retailers, ranging from gift shops and bakeries in East Arlington, more in the center, and the 5 and 10 and others in the Heights. But a couple of years ago, storefronts were noticeably vacant, prompting a movement to get the town to impose a fee-based registry for landlords whose properties languish. So we went from six vacancies right in this strip here to now there are only two. Um, the because the residents care. They don't want their stores to be empty. There are a variety of events to coincide with Shop Local happening throughout town this weekend, including one right here at ACMI, a tree lighting and visit from Santa beginning at 5.30 on Saturday. These celebrations are so important. They bring people out, they revitalize our town centers. And they make people take a look around and hopefully take a peek at the fun and unique. Oh, because I like the um, unusual stores and I like to actually see it and like feel it. You're going to get something really special that you can't just get anywhere else. For more on shop local deals and coinciding events throughout town, visit the Arlington Chamber of Commerce website at arlcc.org. Brenda Mahoney, Arlington Public News. And if you needed another reason to shop local or just come downtown, how about this? Free parking. The two municipal lots will be free of charge on Saturdays from now until December 23rd in Arlington Center. All street meters are in effect as usual. And remember, all parking is always free on Sundays. Holiday lights do add a fat festive atmosphere in town. The twinkling trees and street lamps wrapped in garland seem to just appear. APN reporter Sean Stackhouse brings us this look at the planning behind the holiday glow. December is right around the corner and Arlington is getting into the holiday spirit. The Department of Public Works along with the Chamber of Commerce have been working to place lights and garland around town. We're decorating the heights, the light poles in the heights and also in East Arlington. And then the town um, works in collaboration with the uh, Chamber of Commerce 
to decorate the center of town. Starting around town day, we started a campaign to um, raise money for additional holiday lighting in the center. Last year, we lit Whittemore Park right here outside of my office um, in front of the Jefferson Cutter House. And um, this year, we're looking to expand our lighting program down to Broadway Plaza and Memorial Park. The lights will stay up through the holiday season. Executive Director of the Arlington Chamber of Commerce, Beth Locke, hopes the decorations will enhance business along Mass Ave. It um, gives people pride in um, the way the town looks and um, it's joyful to see things lit um, and sparkly and I think it helps the businesses by making um, the area more uh, inviting to shop and dine and go to the theater. But all that twinkle doesn't come easy. The DPW crew has had to untangle and test hundreds of strands of lights and thousands of feet of garland. We started about three to four weeks ago, maybe even earlier than that, uh, looking at the strings of light like anybody putting up decorations. Uh, part of the uh, struggle is untangling the lights and making sure all the bulbs are working and whatnot. So uh, we spend some downtime during the course of um, the past few months, if it's rainy or whatnot, plugging strings of lights in, making sure bulbs aren't burned out, so forth and so on. Um, and then about two to three weeks ago, we started in earnest to, uh, starting to wrap the light poles with the garland and the, and the lights. Here at ACMI, we have the holidays wrapped up. Our studio is wearing a giant red ribbon and bow for the holiday season. We're getting ready for our annual tree lighting ceremony, which will be Saturday, December 2nd at 530. For Arlington Public News, I'm Sean Stackhouse. Thanks to the DBW and the Chamber of Commerce for their holiday spirit. Are your holiday decorations newsworthy? Send us photos of your holiday displays and lights. Email photos to news at acmi.tv or tweet them to at Arlington Public, and we'll share them on our website at acmi.tv. Shop local this weekend and you'll be right in the heart of holiday happenings. The ACMI tree lighting takes place this Saturday, December 2nd, beginning at 5.30. Families can say hello to a special visitor from the North Pole right here in our studio. Listen to the Park Ave Church Youth Choir and be a part of the tree lighting outside at 6 p.m. The third annual Santa Paws is happening at the Thorndike Field Dog Park on Saturday, December 2nd from 11 to 1. Whether Fido has been naughty or nice this year, Santa Paws will be waiting to take a free photo with your four-legged friend. You can then stick around for hot chocolate and treats, both for humans and dogs. Donations from the event benefit continuing maintenance and upkeep of the dog park. For more information, contact Tracy at yourhomesforsale.com. Here's what else is happening around town. Do you have questions for a member of the school committee? Stop by Cafe Nero at 321 Broadway on Saturday, December 2nd, between 11 a.m. and noon. Members of the committee will be on hand to chat and answer questions over a cup of coffee. Still looking at piles of leaves in your yard? Time to get out and work off some of that Thanksgiving pumpkin pie. The final yard waste collection for the year takes place during the week of December 4th through 8th. Be sure to put yard waste in paper yard bags or containers labeled yard waste to make sure workers pick it up. You can get stickers for free at the DPW offices on Grove Street. If you happen to miss the final collection day in your neighborhood, there will be a one-day drop-off opportunity for Arlington residents only. Bring your yard waste to the DPW, 51 Grove Street, on Saturday, December 16th, between 9 a.m. and noon. Then it's time to put the rakes away and get ready to start shoveling. The Spy Ponders Arlington Catholic Thanksgiving Day football rivalry brought extra excitement this year. Both teams took to the field 5-5. Five and five. ACMI sports reporter Max Cohen wraps up the game and the season for us. Hey everyone, I'm Max Cohen and this is your Arlington Sports Update. Today we had a great Thanksgiving game. The, your Spy Ponders took it 28-8 on the backs of Joey Pazio and Kyle Bowler who had two touchdowns each and really stuck it to the Arlington Catholic defense. Uh, they looked amazing all day long, rushed for well over 200 yards combined, and the offensive and offensive line are firing all cylinders, and the defense, except for a late touchdown, was stout all game long and didn't allow 
any big plays. They looked great out there, and it was a great way to cap off the year a winning season, 6-5 and five season for your Arlington Spy Ponders after a decimal season last year, and they can only go up from here. Coach Gendron and uh, the rest of the team look to come back next year and finish out strong. That's all I have for you today. See you guys next time. And that's our show. You can check out our latest segments and newscasts on the web at acmi.tv slash news. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Arlington Public. And don't forget to send along those holiday photos. And if you'd like to be a part of Arlington Public News and ACMI, email us at news at acmi.tv or stop by the studio at 85 Park Ave. I'm Brenda Mahoney. And I'm James Milan. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Goodbye.